Good Zambul. Welcome to Bhutan e-learning project. I'm Bhim Prashad Bhattarai, geography teacher from Karma Academic. Today, I will be taking you through geography lesson, lesson on rural settlement for key stage four classes 11 and 12. Before we start the lesson, let me share you the lesson outline and objectives. Lesson outline, first we have introduction, we are going to see difference between rural and urban settlement, then types and patterns of rural settlements and factors affecting rural settlement. Now, dear students, at the end of the lesson, you must be able to explain the meaning of settlement. You must be able to elaborate the difference between rural and urban settlement, and you must be able to explain the types and patterns of rural settlement and Finally, you must be able to explain the factors affecting rural settlement. Now, let's start. Settlement. So actually, what is mean by settlement now? You are settling in one of the community, right? Either you are in urban, either you are in rural, either you are wherever you are, you have a community to settle, right? So what does exactly settlement means? As per right, see, settlement means a cluster of dwellings of any type or size where human beings live. So now here, settlement can be of any type, can be a small, and that small settlement slowly will grow into a bigger, and then finally, it will grow to a city, right? So settlement is a cluster of dwelling where people live into any type or size, use this area, and then fulfill their needs. That's called as settlements. Settlements are classified into many different types based on shape and size, but based on population, occupation and other facilities found there, settlements are broadly classified into two. They are, number one is rural settlement and number two is urban settlement. You might have already heard uh, rural and urban settlement. Some of you might be living in rural area, some of you might be living in urban area, right? Then you might be knowing the difference there and the people who are living in rural area will know what's going on rural area and people who are living in urban area will know what is going on in urban area. Now let's see in a pictorial form how does rural settlements look like. See there in the picture, you'll see agriculture activities, few houses, there might be livestock going on, there is no smoke which means no industry is coming, right? Now, when we look at the urban settlement, urban settlements has uh, huge concentrations of buildings, high density of population, more coming out, that means it shows there, is, there are industries, better medical uh, facilities are there, road transport, right? So now let's see what exactly is the difference between rural and urban settlement. You see, rural settlement is an agriculture activity which we call rural settlement is a single activity. Single activity here means the population in rural areas are mainly engaged in primary activities, which is agriculture, fishing, mining, livestock, and so on. These are primary activities. People are mainly engaged in primary activities. But in urban areas, people are engaged in secondary and tertiary activities. Secondary here, it goes manufacturing, it, the industries are there, tertiary activities in urban areas, you will see doctors, teachers, shopkeepers, businessmen, secondary and tertiary activities here. Secondary, it's basically focused on manufacturing, tertiary is a service sectors. So in urban settlement, people are engaged in secondary and tertiary activities. Agriculture activity is not found there. And the basic difference here, to clear cut, in rural settlement, people are mainly engaged in primary activities, uh, but in urban settlement, people are mainly engaged in secondary and tertiary activities. Now let's see the bigger distinction between rural and urban settlement. Rural and urban settlement. Rural settlement, we already discussed, people are engaged in primary activities in rural settlement and in urban settlement, people are engaged in secondary and tertiary activities. Now, in rural settlement, settlement are 
small in size. If you are in rural communities, you will find few houses ranging from 100 to at the max 1000. But in urban settlements, settlements are bigger in size, you will find the houses more than thousands, lakhs and crores. So therefore, settlements are small in size in rural and settlements are bigger in size in urban settlement. Okay? Now, if you look at size of population and the density of population, size of population and density of population is very small in rural, very less density in rural areas, but high density in urban settlements. Settlement. You see, Thimpu city is crowded with people. Thimpu, Thimpu Thomde, Punseling Thomde, uh, Samzongar Thomde, Gelevu Thomde. This town has a large population there. But whereas if you are living in rural village, there might be uh, 2,000, 3,000, or 4,000 population living there. A base example Thimpu has over 16,000 population, Gaza has just 3,000 plus. See the difference, right? Now, when we take into the difference between modern facilities, modern facilities like uh, transportation, communications, uh, medical facilities, uh, education facilities, all the modern facilities are not available in rural area. If you are uh, living in rural areas or in a villages, you will find poor structure of schools, you will find poor structure of health. You see, Jimmy Doji wants National Referral Hospital is located in Thimpu city. Other referral hospital like Gelepu is located in the town and Mongar is also located in the town. So see, almost all the uh, modern facilities are found in urban areas, are mostly available in urban areas, but rural areas are deprived of this. Rural areas mostly do not have these modern facilities. So that are some of the difference between rural and urban settlement. Now let's focus on rural settlement. Types. Types here is uh, how houses are spaced. Okay? Now let's see types of rural settlement in Bhutan, in our country. Okay? Now the first type of rural settlement we have is nucleated. Okay? Let's see how does nucleated looks like in the picture. See, nucleated, if you look at my hand, it's nucleated my fingers, right? And if you this nucleated, and if I disperse, nucleated, right? Keep that concept. We are going to discuss this very clearly. Then second type of settlement that we have in our country is semi-nucleated settlement. Semi-nucleated, okay? It's not, houses are not too far, too close, but it forms a ring. But we are going to discuss this also very clearly. Then next is a dispersed, isolated, scattered, isolated. Right? Dispersed. Fingers are dispersed, right? So you see the diagram there. See the diagram. Houses are built in having a distance. You might have heard social distancing during this time of coronavirus. We'll discuss that. Okay, very interesting. Now, semi-nomadic settlement. Nomads, the highlanders, okay? And these uh, settlements are found in high altitude and people rear mostly yak and sheep there, okay? And then they are seasonal uh, migrants. They practice seasonal migration and we'll, we are going to discuss this. Now let's discuss briefly each one. First, nucleated settlement. See, nucleated settlement is a type of rural settlement where houses are built close to each other around a common nucleus. A common nucleus, a common uh, center, it becomes a lakang there. Okay? Houses are built close to each other around a common nucleus for economic defensive and social reasons. For example, if we take, if the outsider, if the outside enemy attack the community all the time, community will come close together and settle in a nucleated settlement. As simple. Or if the community, if a community have same religion, same communal identity and language and so on, they will come close together and settle in the place. That's how nucleated settlement, right? So uh, nucleated settlement, if you see in the diagram, it is uh, uh, nucleated settlements are surrounded by cultivated lands, which means uh, people have land in far, land is located far away from the settlement, right? So therefore, people will go to their farmland early in the morning and return home at evening only. Therefore, uh, the settlement during the daytime, the population is less in, in the houses and there will be more population in farmlands. People will go for working. 
okay and such type of settlements in bhutan's are mostly found in the higher altitudes areas like urra in bumthang can be a best example urra in bumthang can be a best example of this and we have uh, great advantages of settling in this type of settlement because you will get help during time of emergency suddenly one members get sick in your family and then you want to get help you can just shout doji my appa is sick you will get help quickly but remember if you are distant father you will not get such help but the negative impact there is again you cannot guard your land properly because it's so far you have to work to reach to your field right so there are advantage there are disadvantage suddenly a disadvantage if the disease a communicable disease is outbreak in the community if one person gets a flu for example corona virus then whole of the community is likely to get in nucleated settlement there are advantages there are disadvantages okay now let's move to next type of settlement semi nucleated settlement semi nucleated settlement are characterized by small and compact nucleus around which the other houses are dispersed forming a ring like shapes like for example look at this is the nucleated settlement this is the nucleated settlement here in my hand and you see other houses are built on the surrounding forming a ring right ring like shape that is called as nucleated settlement for example if i give this example of india let's take an example of a uh, caste system uh, the high caste or land landlords will settle in the middle and other service service provider people will live on the surrounding that is how the nucleated settlement is being formed and such type of settlement are found in also in northern parts of bhutan uh, like one base example is uh, gaunte gumba in wangdi now the dispersed settlement dispersed settlement is a type of rural settlement where houses are built far away from each other houses are scattered widely over a vast area which means the houses are surrounded by their own farmlands here farmer will have their house and the houses will be surrounded by their own farm land therefore houses are constructed apart or uh, keeping a distance from each other each houses but the houses are surrounded by farm lands this uh, advantages of living into this settlements is you have heard the words in uh, uh, today's world you know uh, a world threatened by corona virus right you will you need not have to keep distance because your house are already constructed at a distance right so that means i mean to say the uh, outbreak of any diseases very less chances of uh, transmission of diseases and then the, another advantages of settling in this uh, uh, type of uh, settlement is you can guard your land well because you are living nearer to your land but the disadvantages is you will not get the help during emergency there is a problems of labor shortage and so on okay and this type of settlement dispersed settlement isolated or sprinkled settlement this type of settlement are mostly found in southern parts of bhutan like samsi sarwang and all and semi nomadic settlement nomads highlanders okay nomads highlanders the main occupation of people in this settlement is rearing of cattle mainly like yak and sheep they mainly rear yak and sheep this is because of climatic condition in higher altitude the climate is very cold uh, most of the times these area will have snowfall so therefore yak and sheep can survive in cold climate because of having thick fur so they rear yak and sheep they practice seasonal migration the population in these semi nomadic settlement practice seasonal migration because they will move to lower altitude during winter with their livestock and move back to higher altitude during summer with their livestock this is all because of climate and most of them will live in temporary houses and only very few will live in permanent houses they will construct permanent houses in one area but when they move down if they move down 
to lower altitude during winter, only few members out of family of, of the family will settle in the permanent settlement. Okay? And these type of settlements are found in Bhutan in the higher altitudes like Laya in Gasa and Merak Sakten in Tashiga. Now, the next again the interesting topic is factors affecting rural settlement. Factors affecting rural settlement, physical factors. So now what are physical factors? Physical factors we take into account relief, alti altitude, climate, drainage, water source, swell, plain area, steep slope, gentle slopes and so on. Okay? And these physical factors affect the rural settlement pattern. For example, more settlement will occur in plain area. More settlement will occur in a plain area and this settlement will slowly grow and form into compact settlement. For example, if we take, if, if it is in dry area, okay, if it is in dry area, then if this area is dry area and if this area have water upon here, okay, then the settlement will develop around this pond forming a circular settlement right and slowly this gradually this settlement will keep on increasing and it will form into a nucleated settlement that is how physical factors affects the types of rural settlement and again wherever there is fertile swell well wherever there is a, wherever there is fertile swell wherever there is a plain land and moderate climate will have more settlements okay the next is ethnic and cultural factors. Ethnic and cultural factors we take into account that is caste, communal identity, language, religion here. Now, how these factors affect? For example, if it is in Indian culture, the caste system, the high caste people will settle in the middle and other lower caste will settle on the surrounding forming a semi-nucleated settlement. That's how it affects and this nucleated settlement will keep on growing and become a complex and big settlement, a bigger size settlement. Next factor is historical factors, historical factors here. Let's take an example of invaders. If an enemy always attack the community, then they will form a nucleated settlement, right? And for example, basic example in Bhutan, settlement developed around the zones, settlement developed around the zone. In, in, in olden days, people take refuge to zones to get protection from the zone area. So they settle nearer to the zones. So that's how historical factors affect the settlement all over the world. Now, general patterns of rural settlement. Patterns means a designed, how a settlement looks like. Okay? Now, first pattern we have is linear pattern. Linear patterns develop along linear here, it, linear itself means a straight line. Let's say this is a straight line. Let's say this is a road and the settlement developed here, settlement developed on this side. Let's take this is a river, settlement developed in this side and settlement developed in this side, right? So linear pattern of settlement where houses are built along the side of major roads, river banks in the form of straight line that is called as linear settlement. But in Bhutan, linear settlement developed only after the construction of roads and linear settlement in Bhutan are developed just uh, along the side of the roads forming a straight line and just to provide business to the commuters, to the travelers, developing a small restaurants, developing a, a, a shop there uh, to provide the services to the uh, commuters or the travelers. The next type of settlement is circular pattern of settlement. Circular pattern of settlements develop when many houses are constructed along the pond or lake or even monastery forming a circular shape. Similarly, just let's say if there is a monastery here, okay, and people will settle around this monastery, right? That is how circular pattern is depicted in rural areas. That is how circular pattern is found in rural areas. Another example can be if the area has a pond, if the dry area has a pond here, river pond, then again people will settle around this 
water resources. That is how the rural uh, circular pattern of settlement is being depicted. Next pattern of settlement is rectangular pattern of settlement. So, now how does rectangular pattern of settlements depicts is this pattern of settlement develops at the meeting place of two or more roads where the streets are either parallel or perpendicular to each other. Meeting of two or more roads, let us say this is one road and another road meets here, right. Now these roads are parallel, now the settlement develop along these sides of roads and it is exactly looks like rectangular pattern, you see here it looks like rectangular pattern that is how rectangular pattern of settlement is depicted in rural areas. And the next type of settlement is star like pattern very beautiful everybody likes the word called as star more. How does star like set, uh, settlement pattern depicts is when the road radiates from the center then the star like pattern is been depicted like you have the houses here developed along the side of the roads and you have again the houses here, you have few houses here, then you have few houses here, then it similarly look like a star. See it looks like a star that is how star like pattern is been depicted in rural areas of the road radiating from the center, ok. Now the next type of settlement pattern found is shapeless or MFOs. A settlement that is found in rural area which do not have any type of shape, house will develop as, as wishes and there is no any type of shape that is called as shapeless or MFOs settlement pattern, MFOs pattern of settlement. And the last pattern of settlement is terrace or contour pattern these settlement patterns on the hilly slopes where the houses are constructed in the terrace. So, you just see in the hilly slope here, this is a mountain hilly slope and as geogra geography student you already know on the mountain there will be a contour line, right. So, uh, people develop the houses along the contour line exactly looking like a terrace that is called as, that is called as contour pattern of settlement or terrace pattern of settlements, ok. That is all about pattern of settlement and now we came to the closure of our lesson. We discussed the definitions of settlement and we have discussed different between rural and urban settlements. We have discussed types of settlements in Bhutan. There are four types of settlement, nucleated, semi-nucleated, dispersed and seminomadic settlements and we have discussed factors affecting rural settlements and we have also discussed the patterns of rural settlements. And now finally dear students I have a question to you, question number 1 distinguish between rural dispersed settlement and rural nucleated settlement. The next question for you is dispersed settlement is the best settlement to live in. Do you agree? Support your stand. Thank you. Hope you all enjoyed my lesson. Thank you so much. See you in next lesson.